Now, from WYDC-TV, this is Big Fox News at 10. More states are lifting mask mandates as the Omicron surge subsides, but public health officials are urging states to be cautious. Jonathan Sari has more. It feels like we're doing something, you know, kind of wrong or illegal. We're just not used to not wearing a mask. Some of the last statewide mask mandates are coming to an end. Yesterday, Nevada became the latest state to end its indoor mask rules, joining New York and Illinois and rolling back some face mask policies. Governors have cited a decline in COVID numbers when lifting restrictions. According to the CDC, the seven-day average for new infections has fallen to 219,000, down from 800,000 last month. Uh, I can see a future where we can live our lives where we treat COVID like other respiratory viruses. The White House advises people to follow guidance from the CDC, which recommends masks indoors in places with high transmission rates. In an interview with NBC News, President Biden says ending COVID mask rules now may be premature. I committed that I would follow the science, the science as put forward by the CDC. And the, and, the, and the federal people. Meanwhile, protests over COVID-19 restrictions and mandates are continuing in Canada. And now authorities here in the U.S. are bracing for similar demonstrations. The Department of Homeland Security says it's received a warning a potential convoy of truckers could begin protests in Los Angeles on Super Bowl Sunday. There is a multitude of different agencies that will be assisting us from the federal, state and local government and from the region. The White House says additional security will be sent to the Super Bowl just in case. In Atlanta, Jonathan Sari, Fox News. On inflation, prices continue to go up. Despite a positive outlook from the Biden administration, the latest numbers show the issue is only getting worse. Lauren Blanchard has more from Washington. We've got to get our house in order. Frustration on Capitol Hill with new inflation numbers showing Americans are paying 7.5% more than a year ago with inflation at 40 year highs. Everything from groceries to cars to fuel just costs more. I'm going to work like the devil to bring gas prices down. In a statement, President Biden wrote that despite the real stress for American families, quote, there are also signs that we will make it through this challenge. On inflation, obviously we have to do a lot more. We have a very robust policy agenda targeted precisely this problem. The worse than expected report throwing cold water on Democratic hopes of passing the president's Build Back Better bill. We have basically uh, an economy that's on fire. You don't throw more fuel on the fire. No more fuel on the fire. That's the argument against the Biden administration's legislative priorities. Exhibit A is inflation. Uh, it's the most pernicious tax imaginable. It, it, uh, it waterboards uh, middle Americans and uh, those uh, uh, among us who are at the lower end of the wage scale. The report also showed that despite wage increases, the cost of goods outweighs the gains. If you haven't personally gotten a pay raise of 8% or more in the last year, then Democrats' policies have given you a pay cut. Pay cut. A real clear politics average of polls shows 57% of Americans disapprove of the way the president is handling the economy. Bad news for Democrats going into the midterm elections. In Washington, Lauren Blanchard, Fox News. Police in Philadelphia are investigating a horrific stabbing involving six people in the city's Kensington neighborhood. A male suspect is in custody after officials say he stabbed six members of his family as they slept inside a home. The incident took place just after 4 a.m. this morning. Police say the man went bedroom to bedroom, stabbing the victims with what is being described as two different kitchen knives. Three women are currently in critical condition after sustaining multiple stab wounds. There were also several children in the house at the time of the incident, none of whom were stabbed. Investigators say the motive behind the attack is not known at this time. A man in custody after authorities in Philadelphia say he murdered his girlfriend, then tried to decapitate her. Officers arrived at an apartment building this morning and say they found a man using a machete on a woman. The suspect was taken into custody and the victim was pronounced dead at the scene. The identities of both have not been made public. Senator Chuck Schumer is calling on President Biden to invoke his executive powers to cancel student loan debt immediately. This comes as millions of people will be required to begin making payments on their federal student loans in a few months. 
Schumer was a key figure in pushing the payment pause, which is set to expire on May 1st. The New York lawmaker says the student loan debt crisis is negatively impacting marginalized communities and those who attended for-profit schools. So student debt is becoming a forever burden, and it particularly affects communities of color. And we are here to say we must change it. After pushing for multiple extensions, and the president has extended it, our main goal is to get it canceled. There are more than 40 million U.S. borrowers who have federal student loan debt, totaling more than $1.7 trillion in debt. President Biden has a strong warning for Americans still in Ukraine as he holds a call with transatlantic leaders to discuss Russia's buildup of military forces around the border. Lucas Tomlinson has more from Ukraine. Two Russian landing ships arriving in a Crimean harbor Friday, poised to take part in large-scale naval drills off the coast of Ukraine. This says fears mount that Russia could attack at any time, prompting the Biden administration to continue its calls for U.S. citizens in Ukraine to get out. Any uh, American citizens who remain in Ukraine should leave now. Some lawmakers claim that warning sends a message of weakness. You always, always have a commitment that you're going to do anything that's necessary to uh, bring U.S. citizens back home when they're faced with a crisis such as this. And the president should make that very clear. As U.S. forces beef up their presence in nearby Romania, President Biden says any aggression by Moscow will be met with severe consequences. He has to know that if he does, the entire circumstance for Russia changes worldwide, changes overnight. Britain's Defense Secretary Friday meeting with his Russian counterpart in Moscow, urging the Kremlin to pull back on some of the roughly 100,000 troops and 140 ships participating in war games in the region holding the biggest military drill since the Cold War just across the Ukrainian border in neighboring Belarus. Russia says it has no plans to invade. Meanwhile, the U.S. delivering another shipment of weapons to Kyiv Friday morning as part of a $200 million security package. The White House says President Biden is holding talks with NATO leaders today regarding the situation in Ukraine. In Kyiv, Ukraine, Lucas Tomlinson, Fox News. Still ahead tonight, officials are warning that a trucker convoy protesting COVID-19 mandates and restrictions could disrupt the Super Bowl. You will, as always, see an, uh, an increase in uh, security presence, and there is uh, a multitude of different agencies that will be assisting us from the federal, state, and local government, and from the region. More from SoFi Stadium and the security preps underway. Now, your Twin Tiers forecast from Big Fox. All right, thanks again for checking in as we take a look at your local forecast. I'm meteorologist Todd Nelson. And heading into the weekend, we're going to still be a little unsettled, especially Saturday. Seeing temperatures have fall through the day, though, so that'll change any rain that is left over into some scattered light snow showers. It'll be much colder on Saturday night with cloudier skies and then a few leftover and light snow showers on Sunday as another little impulse of energy slides on in, but definitely colder through your second half of the weekend. So a bit of a wintry mix continuing into Saturday. Rain will change to snow overnight tonight in a few spots. I think we'll see a better chance of that rain change over to snow on Saturday as the temps continue to fall and it will be windy. So uh, the snow into the middle part of the day will be wind whipped and much colder on Sunday, as I mentioned, with some light snow showers. And if we see any accumulations this weekend, it would be very minor, generally less than an inch. But overnight tonight, areas of rain continuing. We will see temperatures fall on Saturday. So here comes that light snow chance. Really not seeing much in terms of accumulation, as I mentioned. Cloudy skies continue Saturday night into Sunday morning, and then maybe some additional sunshine at times the morning on Sunday before that light snow chance returns. So here's your forecast in terms of liquid precipitation. Uh, fairly light amounts, less than a tenth of an inch across the region, and that would include the rain overnight and maybe some light snow showers on Saturday. And then minor accumulations north of town, up near the Finger Lakes, maybe a half an inch or less. That'll be about it. But again, with that uh, rain and snow on Saturday with temperatures falling uh, Saturday night, anything that uh, is wet could certainly be refreezing and could be icy on area roadways. So overnight, temperatures will slowly fall, waking up to some light rain 
on Saturday morning at 6 a.m. to temperatures that'll be into the upper 30s. Again, most of the daytime highs on Saturday will be occurring early in the morning. This is what it looks like in terms of the uh, temperature forecast. Again, kind of topping out in the upper 30s to lower 40s. Through the morning hours and then into the afternoon as that colder air settles on in, we'll really start to notice the uh, temperature drop and again, some leftover light snow showers through the afternoon. Uh, winds throughout the day on Saturday will be out of the west and turning out of the northwest late, gusting up close to 15, maybe 25 miles per hour, and then waking up to Sunday morning lows. It'll be in the single digits and lower teens. Of course, with the wind still a bit on the elevated side, it may feel more like the sub-zero range for a few locations. Then daytime highs on Sunday topping out into the lower teens. A little bit of light snow. Don't think we'll have much in terms of accumulation in a town here in Elmira and Corning, but daytime highs, of course, will be almost 15 to 20 degrees below average. Look at this, though. From the 18th to the 24th, we're getting indications of a warming trend, and we'll certainly notice that heading into next week. Already by Wednesday, we're up to 41 and nearing 50 on Thursday. The Freedom Convoy in Canada, inspiring a potential convoy in the U.S. And the Department of Homeland Security is warning their protests could affect the Super Bowl. Jonathan Hunt reports from SoFi Stadium. We are taking measures that are both seen and unseen. With final preparations underway for Super Bowl 56, the Department of Homeland Security says a potential convoy of truckers might begin protests against COVID-19 restrictions and mandates on Super Bowl Sunday. You will, as always, see an, uh, an increase in uh, security presence, and there is a multitude of different agencies that will be assisting us from the federal, state, and local government, and from the region. The DHS says they've received reports that the convoy could begin in Los Angeles, but they're confident it will not disrupt the Super Bowl at SoFi Stadium, where security preps have long been underway. We're very mindful of those that would wish to disrupt this, and we're very, and we're very uh, attentive to ensuring that such an occasion does not occur. The potential convoy of truckers appears to be inspired by those in Canada, which have prompted a state of emergency in Ottawa and blocked two international crossings between the U.S. and Canada. Those traffic blockades now causing an impact on the North American auto industry, forcing the shutdown of a Ford plant in Ontario. Concerns are heightening over a supply chain that has already been hit hard. The White House saying they are monitoring the situation closely. I think it's important for everyone in Canada and the United States to understand what the impact of this blockage is, a uh, potential impact on, uh, on workers, on the supply chain, and that is where we are most focused. In all, some 40 federal, state and local agencies are involved in a massive security operation for the Super Bowl. Throwing a Super Bowl bash? You may have to offer up a wing and a prayer to make it happen. It's going to be more costly to party hardy for this year's Super Bowl. Economists at Wells Fargo say shopping lists could spike from 8 to 14 percent in costs because of inflation. Bargains can be found in some chips, fresh fruits and vegetables, but meat items such as burgers will be pricier. Supply chain disruptions, labor shortages and shipping delays are behind the higher costs. Also, chicken wings may be harder to find, according to a number of reports. Starbucks and retailers around the country are reporting a shortage of disposable coffee cups. The chain says customers may receive their coffee in an unbranded cup due to the ongoing supply chain issues. Imported cups are experiencing big delays, and the domestic employee shortage is affecting plastic cup production as well. Starbucks is currently using its holiday-themed cups to aid with the gap. Other coffee shops and restaurants across the country are combining efforts to obtain supplies by going to local suppliers or buying off Amazon. If you've had trouble finding love during the pandemic, you're not alone. But as COVID restrictions ease and Valentine's Day approaches, it may be time to take another shot at love. Gina Silva talks with a dating strategist on how to find the one. Holding hands, showing love and affection, sweet intimacy. It's what many long for. I definitely am interested in getting a date. Elizabeth Jackson would love to have a date for Valentine's, but she says there's no one in the picture because the last two years have been rough. I haven't had any, actually. I've been single for a super long time. She's not alone. Many people are struggling to find the one. 
Social distancing and mask wearing have made it nearly impossible to make a connection. I think it's been a little bit stressful, you know, because you cannot have contact with people normally. I think it's more challenging. People are having a hard time just really meeting one another. Kimmy Seltzer is a dating strategist and therapist. She says mask or no mask, you can make a connection with a stranger. You can still smile behind the mask. Even though that you have that barrier, you can connect with your eyes and smile with your eyes and just say hello to people. In her workshops, Kimmy encourages people to reevaluate their wardrobe, stop wearing sweats and buy an outfit that makes them feel amazing. A lot of times people hide in their clothes and you can be in your little cocoon and maybe you're scared of being seen. Now's the time to get used to being seen and embracing that. It's all about creating an energy Kimmy calls the charisma glow. It's a magnetic energy that just draws people to you and it's about you. And once you draw people in, Kimmy says, go on dates as many as you want. Your dating portfolio should look like your financial portfolio. You need to diversify as much as possible in order to prevent burnout. All good advice. As for Elizabeth, she's planning on making some changes. I just realized life is short. If I'm interested in a guy, I'm definitely going to go after. And one last tip from the dating expert. She says flirt a lot. If you're playful, you open yourself up to new possibilities. So get out there and flirt. One market near Atlanta is using robots to deliver groceries straight to people's homes. And they also have some cool tech inside their store. Austin Westfall has the story. We're all familiar with the traditional way of buying things at a grocery store by checking out with a live cashier. And more recently, self-checkout kiosks have been becoming more common at grocery stores. But Norris and Bloom behind me is taking automation to a new level. We're taking away the things that nobody likes. Nobody likes waiting in line, fumbling for their payment. Jalea and Jamie Hemmings opened Norrish and Bloom about three weeks ago, introducing a high-tech experience that aims to make grocery shopping as simple as possible. Just scan in with your Norrish and Bloom app and step into the market. It's as easy as walking into the store, picking up something like your favorite coffee, then you walk through these glass doors. Now you've automatically been charged for this coffee on your smartphone. Now, you're ready to walk out. How the, our technology works is that when you pick up an item off the shelf like this, it actually has a weight to the product, and so we know that it's in your digital cart. If you change your mind about buying an item, simply put that item back on the shelf, and the store's weighted shelves and ceiling-mounted sensors will track your movements and recognize that you put it back. That way, you won't be charged. We're going to put it here in the trunk. All right, nurse, go ahead and send out our delivery. The market also has two delivery robots called Norish and Bloom, respectively. Come forward. The robots can deliver within a three mile radius of the store and are temperature controlled to keep food warm or cold. This tech can be especially valuable for people who are unable to leave their homes to shop. Bloom was a bit under the weather when we visited and needed repairs, but Norish was ready to roll. He greeted us, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Got to bring the kids back for that one. It's certainly more accessible. A lot more st stores are able to get their hands on these products and start using them. The Consumer Technology Association says the tech in autonomous grocery stores isn't exactly new. Amazon has opened similar stores in select cities as far back as 2018. But as the tech becomes more affordable, it's becoming more accessible to startups like Norrish and Bloom. So I think there's a lot um, of growth in this area, and I think we'll see it in the future. The owners of Norrish and Bloom say that they are the first black owned autonomous store in the entire world. Right now, they're planning to expand their business. In the immediate future, they're eyeballing locations in Atlanta and in New York. We want to leave you with a smile tonight. If you haven't made your bowl pick yet and need some help, you may want to check in with this adorable pooch in California. Meet Molly, a former Riverside County Animal Services shelter dog. This week, she made the tough decision between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Los Angeles Rams. Two bowls were set up in front of Molly with one treat in each. She made a quick dive for the Bengals but eventually ended up choosing the Rams. The shelter says Molly will be watching Super Bowl 56 this weekend. She'll also be celebrating her 10th birthday. Thanks for joining us. Have a great night.